Good morning, good afternoon, good day, uh, uh, brethren. Welcome to today's devotion. My name is Reverend Julian. I'll be sharing our devotion from Job chapter 19, verses uh, 25 through to 27. And the topic is In the end, he will stand. In the end, he will stand. Now, let us uh, just, I would like to just go quickly read through. Read through that scripture reading from Job chapter 19, verses 25 through to 27. It goes, I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end, he will stand on the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh, I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes. I and not another, how my heart yearns within me. That is our reading for today. Now, in order for us to uh, to proper, properly contextualize that uh, portion of scripture, I'll quickly just give a bit of background uh, as to what led uh, Job uh, to utter such a rhetoric in that in those in that those scriptures that we have read. Now, the Bible tells us that Job was a righteous man who was upright and um, a man of integrity, and he feared God and he feared to do evil. However, he was greatly afflicted uh, one point, at one point in time. Uh, the Lord gave the certain permission to afflict Job because he wanted to demonstrate, he wanted to show him off as his faithful servant, as his servant who would stand the test of time irrespective of affliction. And so Job had been greatly afflicted, was greatly afflicted. His entire family, his sons and daughters were all wiped up within a twink of an eye. And all his wealth and all his animals also were suddenly wiped, up, wiped away within just minutes, just within a twink of an eye, everything was gone. And as if that was not enough, Job was afflicted with a terrible skin condition. He had a terrible skin disease with boils from head to foot. And the Bible says he scraped his skin with a piece of broken pottery as he sat among the ashes. What pain he went through. And when his three friends heard about his suffering, they traveled from their homes to come and comfort and console uh, their friend Job. But instead of comforting and consoling him, they were instead doing the opposite. And oftentimes we find that we are those kind of friends who worsen the pain of those who are suffering, who are in affliction, who are facing affliction. We claim to have solutions to their suffering. We claim to understand why they are suffering, not knowing that we are worsening their situation. So Job's friends are that Job's suffering was the result of an, as a result of unconfessed sin and wickedness or wrongdoing on Job's part. And so because they believed that, they nagged and ridiculed Job further. Now, these three friends of Job had the same view uh, as many cultures that we have in Africa today. Oftentimes in our African culture, we believe that when someone is hit by affliction, such as sickness, by suffering, or somebody dies suddenly or prematurely or mysteriously, just as in the case of Job's case, then the deduction is made that the victim must have done something wrong and is therefore responsible for their own suffering. And so solutions are sold from traditional avenues like witch doctors, social spirits, in order to try and uh, solve that problem. Job's friends in this case had kept telling him to confess his sin and accept his sin as God's suffering. And now uh, brethren would have thought that the wife would be a better companion and a better comforter to him. But instead of being a better comforter, she made matters worse and only advised him to curse God and die. You can find this in Job uh, chapter two, verse nine. But Job, friends, remember, had committed no sin before God. He was blameless before God. He was upright before God and God was pleased with him. But the good thing is that the good news is that in, his, in this kind of suffering that he went through, Job did not sin. So in verses 
19, chap, uh, Job chapter 19, verses 25 to 27, we see that Job demonstrates that he still has hope even amidst his suffering, hope even amidst his pain, hope even amidst his loss, hope even amidst his affliction. He still has faith and trust in this God, in his God to save him. He says, for as long as my Redeemer lives, I know that my Redeemer lives, and he is convinced that his Redeemer will save him. Now, friends, this is strong faith. This is strong hope that Job exhibited in his God and in his master. Because oftentimes, friends, when we are struck with affliction, when we are struck with suffering, we tend to complain. Oftentimes we seek earthly solutions to problems, to end the problem. We lose hope. And of, we, oftentimes we hear people lamenting, I am finished. I am dead. I am done for. But Job did not succumb to his color to this affliction and to every any calamity that was before him he believed that even though his body gave way to death yet god would redeem him even in death that is what job believed now job earlier uh, in job uh, chapter 14 5 uh, he had talked about how the days of a, a month's days are numbered and you cannot exceed minutes or even seconds. So Job understood that this was not his home, that this world was not his home. He's, he was only in this world temporarily. And so his utterance and his confession about my Redeemer lives points to the message, points us to the message of the resurrection, the message of the resurrection. That yes, we will die. We will die one day. Each of us will die one day. But as we die, the body is separated from the soul. And the body is buried and goes past, returns to death. But the soul goes to God. So at resurrection, the soul, uh, the soul meets, will meet the body again. The dead in Christ will rise first. Then the soul will meet with the body again. And we will be one flesh again as the Lord judges us. And as he rewards us according to our deeds and according to our work and faith here on earth. And so our earthly bodies, friends, in the resurrection are, are like tents that are temporal. Our earthly bodies are like tents that are temporal, but our et internal home is in heaven. Our earthly bodies will grow out by disease. They will wear out. Medically, they call it expiring. Your body expires. Your body will expire expire either as a result of disease, our bodies expire either as a result of sickness, of affliction, even the aging, the aging function causes our bodies to expire. And so at one point in time, we will fall sick. At one point in time, we will die. But when we die, we have hope. When we die in the Lord, we have hope that we have not, we will not die completely. We have hope that we shall meet with our Lord and Savior one day in heaven. So when we know Christ as our personal Lord, Savior and Lord, even when we die, we will one day put on our new heavenly bodies and live. Hallelujah. Isn't this good news? Isn't this great hope? And at the end of the day, no matter what happens in life, no matter what happens in life, as long as our faith is in Christ Jesus, we will stand, we will be victorious, and we will overcome. We will live, even if the circumstances around us, even if the circumstances around you are so dire, they are so desperate, and the situation seems like it is irrevocable. The situation seems like there is no solution whatsoever. Do not despair. Do not lose hope. We will be restored one day. We will be saved one day. As believers, we look forward to a time when there will be no pain, a time when there will be no more sickness, a time when there will be no death. That is the time of the utopia. That is provide. Uh, we can find that in Revelation 21 to 4. And that time is coming, friends. So when we suffer, even if our bodies are wasting away, even if we are troubled in this world, even if we are tossed left, right, and center by the cares and of this world, we should not despair. We should hold on. We should hold steadfast, stand steadfast in the Lord with the hope that one day we will overcome, with the hope that one day 
we will be victorious with the hope that one day we will be with our Lord and Master in heaven. And uh, when uh, finally, friends, when we're going through trials, when we're going through hardship, when we're going through affliction, when we're going through suffering, let us meditate on Christ's resurrection power that turned death into life. And in the end, we will stand victorious in Christ Jesus. And finally, 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 before I close, we can only have this kind of hope, the kind of hope that Job had in this portion of scripture. We can only have it if Jesus is alive in our hearts, if Jesus lives in our hearts, if Jesus is our personal savior and Lord. Have you confessed him as your personal Lord and savior? Yeah. The Bible says in Romans 9, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Christ is Lord, you shall be born again. We need to you need to confess Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and live with him and for him daily until the time that he comes back for us. And remember, friends, those who are in the Lord will earn eternal life. And so they will not die eternally. They will just sleep when the time of death comes. But those who not, the wicked who do not know Christ will face eternal punishment, eternal judgment. Which way do you want to go? Which road do you want to go? The choice is yours. Choose Jesus today and live. And now as I close, I want to request that as I pray, I want to ask that if you're here and you've not confessed Christ as your Lord and Savior, just quickly say this prayer after me. Dear Lord, I thank you for this day. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive my sins. Wash me and cleanse me and make me as spotless as snow. Jesus, I pray that you rub my name, erase my name from the book of death and write it in the book of life. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Christ is Lord and that I am born again. In Jesus' name, amen. And may the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with us, friends. May that blessing be with our loved ones, with our families, with our communities, at our places of work. May that blessing permeate all our communities and be upon our nation and never depart from us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you.